All right, how you guys doing today? This is Mr. Muscarella coming at you, and we're going to take a look at section 9.3 of the Integral Test and P-Series, example number 3, where we find out how to estimate the maximum area for the integral test. So here we are in example 3, and it tells us, let f be positive, continuous, and decreasing function from x greater than or equal to 1, such that a sub n equals f of n. If the series blob converges to s and the remainder r sub n equals s minus s of n is bounded by this particular expression here. Use this fact to approximate the sum of the convergent series using the indicated number of terms, which in this case is 10, and include, include an estimate for the maximum area for your approximation. All right, so we're going to be using the integral test here, and that's kind of implied a little bit here from our from our directions. Now, when we take a look at that, of course, you want to notice that f is positive, continuous, and decreasing. So the three conditions for using the integral test are met. The hypothesis of the integral test is actually given, so we are all set. We don't have to go about proving anything. But then there's all these formulas and kind of symbols and stuff here. So here's what we got to kind of take a look at here. In this second sentence, if the series blob converges to s and the remainder r sub n equals all that's really saying is that, look, if you take the entire thing, the entire sum of the series, which in this case would be represented by s, and s is going to be some number that it converges to. So we add up all the terms in this series, and then we actually get an answer. It's not going to be divergent. It's not going to be infinity. So we get a number. We get a value. Well, think about it like this. All of that if you take out, say, maybe the first, in this case, 10 terms, the 10 terms represent the S sub n. So the remainder is going to be the difference between those two things. So it's not too confusing, but it is very symbolically heavy. So what that tells us is that it's going to be bounded by this region right here from 0 to the integral from uh, n to infinity of f of x dx. So this piece right here, that's what's going to help us determine our error is that part right there. So we're going to use that fact to approximate the sum of the convergent series using the indicated number of terms and help us come up with the, an estimate for the maximum error for our approximation. Now, first step, we've got to figure out the 10 terms part. So we've got to figure out the sum of the 10 terms. Now that, you know, based on our formula here, is just pretty straightforward. If we set uh, plug in 1, so our first term, if we plug in 1, 1 over 1 squared plus 1, you get 1 half. Our second term, if you plug in 2, 2 squared plus 1 is 5, so our second term would be 1 fifth. If you plug in 3, then your third term, of course, is going to be 3 squared plus 1 is 10, and so on and so forth. So we would continue to do that until we get the first 10 of those terms. And we add them up, and we get a value. And that value is 0.918. Now I want to go back for a second here, up a little bit, that 0 0.918, that's going to end up going, so we're going to kind of take this piece right here, that's what's going to get substituted right in here, and a little bit over in here, so we're going to talk about that momentarily. So the first 10 terms, we know what that sum is, all right, 0 0.918. So now we just got to figure out the sum of the rest of the stuff. Now to do that, that's where we're going to invoke the limit process. And before we do that, you can rewrite the first 10 terms, their sum, as this particular summation formula right here. Sum from 1 to 10 of 1 over n squared plus 1. Now, that's the first 10 terms. So we've got to figure out the remaining terms. And notice, your lower limit of integration starts at 10, while it concludes with infinity up here at the upper le limit of integration. So we've got to figure out the sum of what's left, and that's where we use the limit process. Now, in working with this guy, you want to recognize that x squared plus 1 is going to be the arctangent integral. So we've got this formula here that kind of helps us out with it. So we're going to have 1 over a arctangent of u over a. So that is going to be very, very, very helpful. So much helpful that it's just going to lead us straight up to this because a has a value of 1, and u, in this case, also has a value of just x. That's our 1. So we've got u is, so let me write that down, 
So u is x, and then a, of course, is 1. Remember, a always has to be the constant piece when you're using that formula. So we're going to evaluate this, and all right, so as b goes to infinity, now we're going to have, and actually this here should be infinity, we're going to have the limit of b going to infinity of arctangent of b minus arctangent of 10. All right, now when b goes to infinity, and this is one of the pieces where you're going to have to kind of remember some of your trig information. So arctangent, what do you remember what the domain restriction is for that? Hopefully you do. So domain restriction for arctangent, so if you think about the picture, the picture for arctangent goes like this, and it's bounded on the right by pi over 2, and of course it's bounded on the left by negative pi over 2. Now I want b to go towards infinity. So as b goes to infinity, so I'm going up and up and up, and that's going to go on forever and ever and ever, but it's approaching pi over 2. So that piece is simply the arc limit of b is uh, arctan of b. That's going to go to pi over 2. And arctangent of 10, of course, is going to be some wacky old decimal. Now, when you evaluate this, please take your time and make sure you're in the correct mode in your calculator. should be in radian mode. And then that gives you a value of 0 0.0997. So this is going to be the other number that we need to help us calculate our, uh, our maximum area to 0 0.997. So we're going to come back to that number in a second. But what this gives us, this tells us the following thing. So we've got our limit, um, our remainder pieces between 0 and that fancy integral looking thing. So that is just straight up from the definition, what they told us before. And from here, we're going to say, OK, 0 0.9819. Where did that number come from? Remember, that's your first 10 terms. The sum of the first 10 terms is going to give us this value, as well as this value. So that's where this 0.9818 comes from. And then the other piece, this 0 0.0997, you should recognize that because that comes the remainder of the rest of the term, the sum of the rest of the terms that we found from using the integral test. So we just simply add up 0.9818 with 0 0.0997 to come up with a value of 0 or 1.082. So our remainder, our maximum error, is going to be between 0.9818 and 1.082. All right, there's going to be some other things we do with determining error, but that's for later on. All right, and in this particular example for the integral test, that's how you determine the maximum area for your approximation. So let's kind of recap for a second. So you're going to find the sum of the given terms first. Now, after you do that, the second thing that you're going to do is you're going to use the limit process. And what you're going to do with that is find the sum of the rest. Now, once you find the sum of the rest, you're going to simply take those two values and you're going to use them in the error formula right here. 0 is less than or equal to r sub n. It's less than or equal to the integral from n to infinity of f of x dx. So that's the last thing you do. So that's it. Three steps. They're kind of long steps, but that's all right. You guys are rock stars and you can handle them. All right, so hopefully by now you understand how to determine the maximum error for an approximation using the integral test. All right, thanks for watching. You guys have a great day, great evening, and good night.